Welcome to our presentation today. Today we're here to talk about scholarships. Um, so we're with the Washington Apple Education Foundation and our hope through this presentation is to give you an idea of common funding sources for college, how to help your student through the application process and give you a little information about the scholarships we offer. We'll go ahead and get started by talking a little bit about who we are. We're the Washington Apple Education Foundation. Our mission is to impact lives through access to educational opportunities. How we do this is by providing students with scholarships, but also different support services to help them be successful in their academic studies and prepare them for their career. We're the charity of the tree fruit industry. What this means is that our donors are tied to cherries, pears, or apples, whether it be that they're owners of orchards, owners of warehouses, or owners of companies affiliated with the industry, or simply individuals that have came across the industry and decided to donate to student success. We award over a million dollars in scholarships every year, and we serve over 300 scholarship recipients. The majority of our students are renewal, which is a great part about our program that students are eligible to renew their scholarship for up to four undergraduate years. So a few of the common funding sources are scholarships, FAFSA and WAFSA, work income and personal savings and loans. So we'll briefly go over each of these. To begin with, we'll go over what scholarships are. Scholarships are a form of financial aid. Essentially what it means is free money for college. So once a student receives a scholarship, this is money that they can use towards any college related expense, whether it be tuition, books, housing, transportation, any expense that comes with pursuing higher education, your scholarship money can be used towards that. There are multiple different criteria for each scholarship. Each scholarship will focus on different um, criteria. Their scholarships are focused on athletics, financial need, leadership, community service, as well as, of course, um, what extracurricular activities a student participates in. So financial aid, it can be accessed through two different applications. The FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid, and that's the link to their website. This is for students who qualified for federal aid. So a student must be either a US citizen or permanent resident to qualify. However, if they don't qualify for federal aid, we do live in a state that offers state aid. So the WASA is the Washington application for state financial aid and there's the link to their website. This is for students to be eligible for um, college need, college grants through the state of Washington. So with these applications, the student could be offered financial aid through grants, which is money that doesn't have to be paid back work study. So that's a great um, resource if the student has access to it where they get to work on their campus um, and get paid. We really encourage this because the schools um, have different departments and they all recognize that the priority of the student is for to be there for their academics. So they're more lenient on their work schedules and they might also qualify through loans through these applications. The eligibility is based on the student's um, status. So again, they have to be U.S. citizen or permanent resident to qualify for FAFSA. If not, they'll submit the WASA application. To be eligible for the aid offered, the student's uh, financial income is going to be looked at. So the family is going to submit their tax returns, and that's how they're going to determine what kind of need or what kind of um, aid they're offered. The applications opened in December, so if your student has it started, we really recommend that they start working on that right away. Another form of paying for a student's education is through personal savings and work income. In this section, we usually advise a student to start considering ways that they could make changes to their personal expenses to save for their own education. The example I typically give is how my senior year of high school, I made changes to my personal habits to save for my own education. My personal habit being my coffee intake. So instead of buying coffee once a day, um, I would I changed it to twice a week. And by doing this, I I was able to save forty to fifty dollars a week. At the beginning, it didn't seem like a lot of money, but by the time I left to college, I had saved a couple hundred dollars that I used for tuition, for books, for transportation, for any expense that I needed while I was away from home. Another example is to encourage your students to consider a job where they can work extra hours, especially in the summer. My summers were typically spent in warehouses because I knew I had a little bit more flexibility with working extra hours. So maybe start encouraging your student to consider where they could make changes to their own expenses as well as where could they work the summer that would allow them to save a little bit of extra money for their own education. 
So loans is another way to pay for college. This is the most costly out of the different funding sources, just because the student is paying back the money they borrowed along with any interest that's accumulated. So there's two types of loans that are offered through the FAFSA, the subsidized and unsubsidized loans. The subsidized loan will likely have a deferment period. So the repayment will likely happen after the student graduates. This is really great so the student can get settled down, hopefully um, get a job and be able to start making those monthly payments. Um, the unsubsidized, so for this loan, interest will start accumulating as soon as the loan is taken out and the repayment period might start prior to the student graduating. So if the student has to take out a loan, we do recommend, recommend the subsidize just because they have that deferment period. There's also private loans. So these are loans that parents can take out on behalf of the student. They'll likely go through their local bank or financial institution of their choice. Contracts vary. We do like to remind parents and students that signing a loan or getting a loan, you are signing a legal contract. So just be very careful in reading the terms and conditions how much you'll have to pay on a monthly um, basis, when you have to start paying and when you have to finish that loan. So just things to keep in mind, um, not following the terms and conditions can greatly affect your credit. So just wanna be mindful of that. Now, different ways that you can support a student as they start working through the scholarship application, um, our biggest recommendation is giving your student reminders. So. Unfortunately, we don't see the student every day, but you have that opportunity to speak to them and remind them on a daily basis. A simple reminder will make a huge difference, especially if the student has forgotten the deadline. A lot of the times they're balancing or juggling now uh, school responsibilities, maybe work or personal responsibilities that they have going on. So adding a scholarship application may seem a little too overwhelming for them. So simply reminding them, hey, that deadline is coming up. Have you submitted that application? will make a huge difference. A recommendation we give is putting it somewhere where your student sees every day. Um, our example is the refrigerator. So putting that little flyer on the refrigerator, your student will most likely see it every day and have that constant reminder that that's coming up and they should probably start working on it. Another way to support your student is by setting time aside to work with them through the financial information sections on scholarship applications, as well as the FAFSA and WASPA. You will, they, your student will most likely be asked where you work, um, what company, position. And so having this information ready for your student would, will make the application process so much easier for them, as well as having your tax documents ready just in case they are needed. So for some scholarship applications, they might be needed, but they will de definitely be needed for the FAFSA or WASFA. Another form of supporting your student is through words of encouragement. So it doesn't seem like something too complicated, but the simple act gives your student that motivation to continue doing it and to complete those applications. To, it just gives them that reminder that they are capable of achieving everything that they set their mind to. Um, and again, this can be a very stressful time for your students. So just simply giving them that little push of encouragement will go a long way. Another form that you can support your student is financially, if it is a possibility within your household. If not, there's all, there's a, variety of different ways that you can support your student. Just how we mentioned, words of encouragement go a long ways. So a little more information about scholarships. So just a quick reminder, you should never have to pay for a scholarship. Like Brenda mentioned, scholarships are free money. So if you do come across a website that asks you to enter your credit card information or ever provide your banking information, it's likely a scam. So we recommend closing out of that and using a different uh, service or a different website. You should never ever have to pay for scholarships. There's also no limits on how many scholarships a student can receive. So that's why we like to encourage them to apply to as many as they qualify, just because they can receive um, as many as there are. There's no limit uh, to how many they can receive every year. The majority of the scholarships are offered senior year of high school, but there are some that are offered for students after they graduate high school and already in college, but that number does decrease. Um, scholarships can be used at community college, private and public universities and vocational and technical programs. So there are scholarships for vocational programs as well. So students just have to do a little research. A lot of the schools provide scholarships through their own programs. We also encourage the students to reach out to the college or university that they're attending or they're interested in attending and asking how they can apply for their scholarships. 
Each school offers scholarships to students that are gonna attend that institution. There are some schools that will make students eligible by simply um, looking at their admissions applications. And for other schools, the student has to submit a separate application to be considered for the institutional scholarship. So it's worth calling the financial aid office to ask what's available and how to apply. Students who have already graduated high school can still apply for um, scholarships. Like I mentioned, there are some for college students, but not as many as there are for high school graduates. So we do encourage students to continue looking for scholarships even when they're already in college. And there are some renewable scholarship. So the benefit to that is that the student can reward those, can renew those funds from year to year. The scholarships offered through WAVE are renewable for a total of four undergraduate years. So we will help students fund one undergraduate degree within those four years. A quick reminder to students and parents, please remind your students, incomplete applications will not be accepted. So it is very important that the student reads the application in its entirety and follows all the instructions. Anything that has to be submitted separately must be received by the deadline. Um, incomplete applications will be, will not be looked at, so the, the applicant will automatically be disqualified if anything is missing. So it's important that they look for that deadline and make sure everything's turned in on time. With that in mind, we encourage students to reach out to the scholarship providers to verify that everything is received. So students are always welcome to call our office or send us an email to verify that they that we received their application and their supporting documents. They'll likely send in a transcript and a letter of reference separately. So they can always call in and we can give them a status uh, report on where those are. A few common sections of an application. Uh, there is likely gonna be an academic section. So we wanna see how the student is performing in their classes. With that, we're gonna ask for an official transcript. The transcript must include fall grades. So the student should make sure that those are printed on there before they send them over to us. If they're not included or if the transcript is unofficial, we will not accept it and the application will be considered um, disqualified or incomplete. So it's important that they read those instructions. There's gonna be a financial aid information section. So it might include information regarding your taxes, your family income. For our scholarship, we are gonna ask about employment information for parents, even if they're not employed in the tree fruit industry. This year, we are requiring one letter of reference. So the hope of having the letter is to learn a little bit more about the applicant through a different perspective. So some appropriate letter writers are teachers, coaches, maybe supervisors, if the student works or if they volunteer, the leader of that volunteer group. We really wanna understand um, the student through a different lens. So learn more about their character, their values, things like that. We are, we are only requiring one letter, but we do encourage students to submit two, just in case one of them doesn't get to us on time. If we receive the other one, the second letter on time, we can still move their application forward through the process. Um, our application asks for the SATs and ACT scores. Some other applications do as well. So if that's a requirement, fill those in. If the student isn't taking them because their school doesn't require it, they simply just need to note that on the application saying that I didn't take it because the college I'm attending is not requiring it. And like that, they won't be penalized. We wanna learn what the student is involved with. So there's likely gonna be a section regarding extracurricular activities. We tell students fill in as much as you can in this section, just so we have a better idea of how you spend your time outside of the classroom. And then the narrative sections. For our scholarship, we have short answers, a personal statement and essays. The biggest recommendations we give here to students is making sure one, you're following the prompt, but also being personal and authentic. Students should never have to feel like they have to make anything up to stand out. It should be true and honest information. Um, and also always proofread. That makes a big difference. We wanna make sure that the application is really error free. So they're checking grammar, spelling, punctuation, because all of that reflects on their application. So they can have a family member check it, maybe a teacher at school check it, but it's important that they get that reviewed before they submit it and that they should review the application from beginning to end, not just those narrative pieces. Now we'll go over a little bit about our specific scholarships. We have two separate applications, our universal and our vocational technical application. Our universal is for students who have ties to the tree fruit industry. Majority of the times is through their parents' work in cherries, pears, or apples. Or if the student 
wants to pursue a career that will bring them back into the industry. So the example we typically give is maybe there's a student whose parents don't work in the industry, but the student wants to go and study fruit and vegetable management. And with their fruit and vegetable management degree, they hope to return to the industry and work for a local fruit company that could make them eligible even if they don't have that tie through their parents. If a student has a tie to their through their parents' work, there is no um, restriction as to what career or major they can pursue while they're in college. We also have our vocational technical. This is for students pursuing careers such as HVAC, electrical, welding, refrigeration. There's a full list of eligible programs on the application. For the vocational technical, students do not need a tie to the tree fruit industry to qualify, but it is a hope that with their degree or certification, they will return and work in the industry. Both applications open every September 15th and close March 1st. So our, our deadline is approaching. If you have any students who are interested or eligible to apply, encourage them to submit that application as soon as possible, just because we are a month away from the deadline. This is our contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call, send us an email. And that is our website where you can access our scholarship applications. This is our physical address. We are located in Wenatchee, but serve students throughout Central Washington. And this is the address where students would mail their official transcripts as well as letters of reference. Thank you, and feel free to reach out if there's anything we can help with.